Hi there, it's Sam from poodlestock.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is a huge box bag. And you can see I can't even fit it in the camera lens. Let me zoom out. Oh, you can, as you see, I can't actually even zoom out far enough. It is huge. This bag, uh, or box bag, because it's made with cardstock, measures seven by, uh, seven inches that way. I'm trying to zoom back in and talk. Seven, seven inches that way by three inches that way by nine inches that way, which is 17 and a half by seven and a half by 23 and a half centimeters. It's a whopper. And this was designed um, because one of my lovely ladies who um, is part of my marker club, she asked if I could help her make a really big bag for a gift she'd bought for somebody. So I said I would help her. And obviously by the size of it, you need two pieces of cardstock to get the extra size going on. Um, but basically you're, you're building two sides on each piece. I'm gonna show you how to make it and how, what the principle is. So I'm gonna to have to put everything completely off my desk because there's just no room. So I've got two pieces here that measure 11 by 12 inches, which is 28 by 30 centimeters. And I'm going to take the first one on the 11 inch side. So this is very important, the 11 inch side first. Um, and you score it at three inches and 10 inches okay which is the this is the 28 centimeter side and you score it at uh seven and a half centimeters and 25 centimeters turn it round and score it at three inches which is seven and a half centimeters that's one half of the box get my other piece of paper check them on the right side yes 11 inches 28 centimeters i do exactly the same so three inches and 10 inches which is seven and a half and 25 and then turn it and make sure that you're turning exactly the same way so you can see I've got my short line and my wide line so turn it exactly the same way and score it three which is two and a, uh, seven and a half centimeters okay scoring tool out of the way come along and burnish all of your score lines and because this is a big big box burnish them very well because we don't want this gaping or the sides collapsing in or it going saggy or anything like that. So do burnish them well. And this is Coastal Cabana cardstock, which is lush. I love this. It's very Tiffany, isn't it? And then fold these ones. And I'm sending my grid paper everywhere. Oh, it hurts my head. I can't do that. There we go. Right. Bits we need to cut. What's going to happen is that we're going to stick the box like that at this point. So it is all going to fold around. So you need to do, as I do with any kind of box, cut off the small skinny rectangle that you will have. And we're going to do this twice. We're going to take it off twice on both pieces. So get rid of that one and then cut up the score line of this one. So this is half of the bottom of our box, or half of half of the box. You can see how it's going to work. And then do the same over here. So cut up your score line and remove the skinny one. Just get rid of it. Don't need it. Don't want it. All gone. And as I said, we're going to stick this part to here. It's going to stick down. It might be easier for you. It's up to you whether you line up and go like that. But that's actually what we're going to do. We're just going to stick here. So I'm going to use sticky strip. Um, you could use liquid glue if you wanted to. I just like the sticky strip for speed purposes. So close to the score line. And the scissors, there they are. And actually, whoops, put exactly put your sticky strip in exactly the same place. So basically, we're just creating a mirror. A mirror effect, I should say. No, it's not a mirror effect. Identical. Ugh, my brain. So I'm completely throwing the doorbell's just wrong. Milkman's just come for his milk money. And it's just completely thrown me. And then on one of these larger pieces, it doesn't matter which, stick your sticky strip. You could put it on both if you wanted. If you've got something heavy in here, I know what's going into Carol's bag for her sister's gift. And it's not too heavy but you could put plenty in okay 
So this bit, we're going to, we're now going to start sticking stuff together. And where's my paper piercer? And just literally line it up. We're going to line this loose edge up to this score line here, but make sure you're lining up neatly at the top as well. There we go. So done. That's our hinge, our side sorted. And then this one, much as I do, you know, on a on a regular box that you know I haven't had to make extra sized cardstock with just fold it over and push it down and then that will be how we build it up I forgot to put the DSP on I'll put it on now I've just taken little panels let me bring this one back in um, I, I kind of went semi plain on this box um, because I wanted to make it look well the original idea in my head was to make it look like a, a luxurious bag that you would get from a shoe shop or somewhere like that um, and uh, but when I googled to get images I'm looking for my snail um, when I googled for images, they were all plain and really boring. They were white. Most of them were white with just a little logo at the bottom. And that's just too boring for me. So I decided to go with Knight of Navy over here um, with a matching DSP. And this time Coastal Cabana with the Retro Fresh. And these pieces of paper are measuring in at four and a half by six, sorry, four by six and a half centimetres, which is 17 by 10. Oh, let's try that again four by six and a half inches which is 17 by 10 centimeters and they are literally just going at the bottom so this is my very girly version with the mixed bunch stamp that I stamped three times and then cut with the uh, matching punch I put it there and then this one is petite petals and actually I've, I've embossed my little tag because the zigzags matched although in the opposite direction this one though I'm just going to put on one of our lovely retro fresh uh, journaling tags and there's loads in there I'm not really a journaler journaler is that the right word I don't know but I loved it and I thought that was really cool as a birthday one and it matches it all tones it's a whole full product suite so I'm just going to put four in there so not no stamping in today's project do you know what I'm a, more of a stamper in card projects than I am 3d projects let's put that there and then I can now put the box together so I'm going to fold in my sides I put the sticky strip on the wrong bit put the sticky strip on the back I'll just put some snail on quickly just so you can see it all closing together that is probably two inches from your camera screen there we go and then the sides I haven't deliberately pinched them in to create a shape as such but just so that the bag begins to clothes a bit like a shopping bag would um, so I'm just just much as you would a milk carton style but not to deliberately close it like that but just to get that shape that's how I've done that and then I'm going to bring in um, a hole punch just here so I can put my ribbon in for my handles Oops. Oh. it's all stuck can't get it in there we go. And hopefully, fairly soon, I won't need to use this handheld punch anymore. I'm not going to tell you why. I'm sure you can probably work out why. Cotton ribbon, and I've got two bits that are about 16 inches, about 40 centimetres, just to make the handles. Um, but I've cut them off deliberately at the same length so that I know that my handles are going to be the same length when I finish doing it because the last thing you want is it you don't want monkey handles do you oh this is such a big box I'm struggling to keep it on the desk not there and a notch through this one so I'm feeding from the front to the back making my knot but keeping it very close to the end of the ribbon and then I know that my handles are going to remain the same length I don't know how I'm going to take a photograph of these boxes. My little pop-up studio that I use is not that big. It's going to be fun. Oh, they might have to go out on location in my garden or something. <laughs> if 
final, final bit. There we go. And then those handles are they are the same length as you can see because I cut the I cut the ribbon first. And that is my cute gift bag. It's not a, you know what something of this size you really can't call cute, can you? But it's adorable. I like it. And it's just it's lovely. But you could hold you could hold a giant chocolate shoe. <gasps> I didn't tell you. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully Carol will have already given her the will have given her gift. But yeah, she's she's bought a giant chocolate shoe for her sister's birthday. I'd like a giant chocolate shoe, please. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me, and I hope to speak to you soon.